Welcome to the Timeline Tools instructional video for laying out events on the timeline. This video will cover adjusting event locations and sizes, adding gaps between events or overlapping events, and setting fade in and fade out times and curve types. For this instructional video, I'll be performing a typical event layout task to assemble a photo slideshow project. I've opened a simple project that contains some randomly placed photo images of various sizes. Some events have gaps between them, some are overlapped, and some have non-overlapped fade settings. Your projects may start off differently, but that doesn't change anything I'll be demonstrating here. We'll start by selecting the Timeline Tools, Track Tools, and Options tab and focus on the Event Gap Management section in the left-hand side of the window. We'll be using the controls in the Adjust Event Gap, Overlap, and Size section of the window. Here you'll find three option buttons to let you choose how to perform your project event layouts. The first two, Remove Gaps, Overlap, and Fades, and Remove Gaps and Overlap are presets that perform specific adjustments to the layout of your timeline events. Third radio button, Adjust Gaps, Event Length, Overlap, and Fade, is a general purpose selection that provides most flexibility in laying out your timeline events. Along with the three option buttons, there are additional checkboxes, input fields, and radio buttons that control how your events are arranged on the timeline. We'll discuss these a little later. In a typical event layout scenario, I'd like to shift all the events on the timeline to remove any overlap or gaps between them in addition to removing any existing fade settings. This is easily accomplished by restoring our default settings, then selecting the first of two presets, the Remove Gaps, Overlap, and Fades radio button, and then by clicking on the Adjust Events push button. As you can see, all the events have been shifted on the timeline, removing any overlap gaps and fade settings, and the size of it, each individual event has remained unchanged. In this example, all the events were shifted to the left edge of the timeline. But what if we want to remove all the event gaps, overlap, and fade settings, but we want to do this to a few selected events? Furthermore, what if we want to keep the first selected event in its current location and shift all the remaining events to the right of the first one? Before I start, I'll undo the last changes and restore my settings. For this example, the Selected Events Only and Lock First Event checkboxes come into play. I'll check both of these checkboxes, then select the events I want to adjust, and lastly, I'll push the Adjust Events push button. I'll use the Vegas Select Events to End menu item to quickly select my events. As you can see, the effect is the same as before, but we've used the first selected event as an anchor to lay out all of the other events to the right of it on the timeline. Another variation on this event layout scenario is to use the Remove Gaps and Overlap radio button option. First, I'll undo my last changes and restore my settings. This preset performs the same action on your timeline events as the Remove Gaps, Overlap, and Fade preset, with the exception that it leaves the existing fade settings unchanged. Okay, let's recap what we've done. In the previous examples, we've used the two option presets to perform some simple layout tasks. We've arranged all timeline events, and we've arranged only selected events. And in both cases, we've not changed the event size. Now I'll demonstrate how the simple layout task we did using both preset options can be accomplished using the more advanced third option button setting. First I'll undo the last changes and restore my settings. The default settings automatically select the Adjust Gaps, Event Length, Overlap, and Fade option button. With this option selected, the related controls become enabled to let you make your event layout configuration choices. First off, 
I prefer to work in units of video frames, so I'll make sure this is selected. Next, to accomplish what we did in our first example, we need to do the following. We need to check the checkbox immediately to the left of the event size input box. This tells Timeline Tools not to make any changes to the event sizes. Next, we need to set the overlap size value to zero to remove any overlap. Then we need to set a fade type setting of none to remove any existing fade curves. And lastly, we'll click on the Adjust Events button. To perform the same type of action as the Remove Gaps and Overlap option, all we need to do is, first, we'll undo the previous action, and then we'll change the Fade Type setting from None to Ignore. Lastly, we'll again push the Adjust Events button. As you can see, instead of removing the existing Fade settings, Timeline Tools ignores them now, leaving them unchanged. Before continuing on, I should mention there are a couple other ways we could have configured our settings to accomplish the same task. In both of the previous examples, we had the event size ignore checkbox checked. This told Timeline Tools not to make any changes to the length of the events. We could have accomplished the same thing by unchecking the ignore checkbox and instead check the relative event size change checkbox and enter a value of zero in the event size input box. This tells Timeline Tools to make a relative change to the current length of the events by zero units, which is effectively making no change at all. Lastly, we could also have accomplished the same result by enabling a special event property that tells Timeline Tools to ignore making a size change to the events that have that property set. Prior to Timeline Tools version 1.0.50, any event with its locked property enabled would not have had its size changed when events were adjusted. Starting with version 1.0.50, there is a new custom event property called Fixed Event Length, or just Fixed, that can be used instead of the Vegas Lock property. You must first enable this new feature in the Timeline Tools options before it can be used. And you can view the state of this property in the main display grid if the Show option is enabled in the Timeline Tools option. This is how you use the Fixed property to prevent changes to the lengths of your desired events. We'll start by undoing the previous actions and resetting our configuration settings. Next, I'll switch to the Track Event Info tab. Then I'll highlight all events in the grid. I'll bring up the Property Editor by selecting the Edit Highlighted Events Properties Context menu. And I'll find the Fixed Event Length property in the Event Properties group. Next, I'll change the setting to True and close the Property Editor window. Notice that I've enabled all my events fixed properties. And lastly, I'll switch back to the Track Tools and Options tab. Now, when I press the Adjust Events button, all the events are moved, but their sizes remain unchanged. Please note that changes made to multiple event properties using the Property Editor is similar in behavior to what would happen if you were to manually make a change to each event property one at a time. Each change would place its own undo action in the Vegas undo stack. As you can see, the changes we made to the fixed properties of multiple events resulted in multiple undo entries in the undo stack. To restore the fixed properties back to the disabled state, it's quicker to again use the property editor. So let's do that using a different technique. First, I'll select all the events in the Vegas timeline by using the Vegas context menu. Then I'll click on the Track Tools and Option tab to give focus back to Timeline Tools. Then I'll press the Control-Shift-P combination of keys to bring up the property editor to edit selected timeline events. I'll change the Fixed Event Length property back to False and close the Property Editor window.
quick check in the main display grid shows that all the fixed properties have been cleared. Let's move on to see how you can use the advanced controls to achieve more complex event layouts. First I'll undo the last changes and restore my settings. When I'm creating a video slideshow, my workflow is as follows. I gather up all my source images and photographs that will be included in the show. Then I make changes and adjustments to my photo using a standalone photo editor program. I import my edited photos into the Vegas timeline, and I use timeline tools to move, group, rearrange, and reverse my timeline events as needed. I then use timeline tools to lay out my events using overlap and gaps. I apply random or pseudo-random transitions to my events as needed, and I add accompanying music or a soundtrack to the slideshow. Finally, I make tweaks to the video events to fit the video to fit the audio length. For the following examples, I'll proceed as though I was in the layout step of my slideshow production where I lay out my events using overlap and gaps. But before I start, the first thing I do is to decide what type of visual style my slideshow will present. Do I want to have the look and feel of an old slide projector moving through a tray of slides? Or should it look like a modern film presentation with faded overlapping event transitions possibly using random transitional effects. In this first example, I'll lay out the events to resemble an old slide projector presentation. This is easily done by doing the following steps. First, let's reset all of the configuration settings and clear the fixed properties of all events. Next, I need to decide how long each of the slides will appear on screen so I can make adjustments to the event size. I'll use four seconds in this example, but to be a bit more precise, I'm going to continue using units in frames instead of units of time. This way, I can use numbers that will not cause any rounding errors when frames and times do not convert precisely. For my NTSC project, 120 frames run about 4 seconds, so that's what I'll enter into the event size input field. Next, I'll include a 1 half second gap between slides to simulate the time it takes to switch slides in an old slide projector. That will be about 15 frames. But first, I must check the force no event overlap checkbox telling Timeline Tools I want to add event gaps instead of event overlap. Then I'll enter 15 into the gap size input field. After entering my gap size, I'll add some event leading and trailing edge fading on each slide. I'll use one quarter of a second for this example or about seven frames. And then I'll set the fade curve type to linear. Lastly, I'll click on the Adjust Events button to lay out my events. The resulting layout simulates the look and feel of an old slideshow projector automatically progressing through a tray of slides. To complete the effect, all you need to do is add a series of slide projector sound clips positioned on the audio track at regular intervals under the inter-event gaps in the video track. In the next example, I'll create a more common slideshow using overlapped or cross-faded event transitions. First, I'll undo the last changes and restore my settings. For this slideshow, I'll make the slide size 5 seconds, or 150 frames, and the overlap size 1 second, or 30 frames. I'll continue to use a smooth type fade curve for the transition period, and lastly, I'll press the Adjust Events button to lay out the events. That's all it takes to quickly lay out your events in this manner. If your slideshows are like mine, you'll notice that some slides are more or less interesting than others, and that means that you'll want to tweak certain slides so they remain on screen for a longer or shorter time. Starting with a slideshow that's already been laid out, let's take a look at modifying 
one or more slides to change their lengths without affecting the lengths of the rest of the slides in the show. The same procedure is used to change a slide's duration to be either longer or shorter. So this is what you must do. First I'll restore my default settings. Next I'll select the slides in the Vegas timeline that I want to modify. I'll select these two slides of a P-38 crew and a C-47 flying over the pyramids. Then I'll check the Selected Events Only checkbox. Next I'll check the Lock First Event checkbox. And then I'll check the Shift Trailing Events checkbox. Now I'll set the new length of the two selected events to be 90 frames. And I'll re-enter my 30 frame overlap size. Finally, I'll press the Adjust Events button. A quick check of the main display grid shows the two selected events have been reduced in length and the trailing events have been shifted left to make up for their shorter lengths. You may want to try repeating these steps without checking the Lock First Event checkbox and again without checking the Shift Trailing Events checkbox. See if you can guess what will happen. With a little experimentation, you'll gain a better understanding what these options provide. To be thorough, let me quickly select one event in the Vegas timeline and set its duration to 240 frames and press Adjust Events. A quick check in the main display grid shows the selected event has been made longer. Before continuing on, if the changes we made to the selected event lengths are acceptable and we want to prevent them from being changed from our slideshow project's default of a 30 frame overlap and a 150 frame size, we need to mark these events so the lengths will not be altered if we make additional changes later to the events. This is done by selecting the three events we modified in the Vegas timeline, clicking back on the Timeline Tools window to give it focus, and then pressing the Control shift p key combination to bring up the Event Property Editor. Next, we'll change the Fixed Event Length property to True, and finally we'll close the Property Editor. From this point on, the marked events will not have their event lengths changed. And this concludes the instructional video on how to rapidly lay out your events on the Vegas Timeline using Timeline Tools.